In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to control um, the keyboards and how to track keyboard events and actually respond to them. The first line um, is always needed for any Pi game uh, project. Um, I'm basically importing Pi game so I can use it. Um, line 3 then initializes the Pi game engine. You don't need to do this when uh, playing, just playing music, but you do need to do it if you're handling any events. Now, because um, a normal command line window won't trap uh, keyboard events or um, mouse events, we have to create our own screen, our own little window. We'll look at the details of these commands in another tutorial, but for now, you just need to have them um, in order to get this code running. So let's actually just see what happens when I execute it. And you see two windows open up. Now, the idea behind this program is that Based on some key presses, you press the A key on the keyboards, you see it says A was pressed. Press B, B was pressed. If I press any other key, it gives me an error. And if I press the escape key, the program closes. So let's actually see how this program is doing it. It's doing it through the use of two loops. The outer loop is kind of the main game loop. This will keep running until I want the program to stop. So I have a, a simple variable, which is set to false initially. And what I'm trying to say is while it's not the end of the program. So while this program, I want this program to keep running, it will keep going to do so. So the second end program is turned to true, that will stop the code. Just as a little side point, while loops will always repeat if um, the condition, the bit after the while loop, is true. Ergo, because end program is false, and I'm knotting it or inverting it, that's why this loop will keep keep going. Now I've got the game loop here, the event loop. Now the way um, event loops work is that I will listen uh, for something to happen. So I'll listen for the keyboard, the mouse, I'll wait until an event has happened and then try and process it. So this outer loop here for e in event.get, what that'll do is ask Pygame, since the last time I ran this loop, has any events happened? If they have, I'm going to look over them and do something with them. So every time you press a key, that is um, an event, and what happens is that gets stored in this event object, which um, Pygame manages for you, um, and then you can iterate or loop over each element of, um, of those events. The full loop you might not be familiar with, but it's just a way of iterating over uh, arrays and lists. So it's a quite useful structure. So let's have a look at it. So if e.type equals keyed out, now because there's not just keyboard events here, we've got mouse events, we've got time events, there's loads of different events that could potentially happen. So I need to first of all use an if statement to check which type event. Now key down is basically when I press the key down on the keyboard. There is another one, which is key up, which is when I release the key. These are done separately because sometimes you might only want to uh, reinvent when the key is released, or sometimes you want to do it when the key is pressed. So depends on what you try and do. So I'm going to leave this key down. I then got a series of if statements, which basically are checking which type of key has been pressed. So e dot key. It's basically saying, okay, this is the key that has been pressed, now that I know it's um, a key down event. And k underscore a is basically a constant that Pygame uses to represent the a key. If I just done it like that, um, well, it's quite easy for me to name a variable called a, so it would get very confusing, which is why it's written like this. So, if the a key was pressed, k underscore a, then I want to print that line of code out. Elif, the B was pressed, I want to run that line of code, otherwise I want to uh, print an error message out. However, if the escape key was pressed, I want to set end program to be true. Um, so the escape key is essentially what's controlling whether this program will end or not. So to quit the program, all I have to do is set this uh, end program variable to be true, and remember from the outer loop, this loop will keep going, keep listening for events until that becomes true, which is essentially stopping the program. 
Now you're probably wondering, well, where on earth are you getting all this K underscore escape, K underscore B, K underscore A? How do I know which one to use if I want, say, the up arrow or the enter key? Well, there is a um, website. I'm going to go to the Pygame documentation. If you scroll down, uh, here we go. We have all of the possible keys which you can use in your game. So you just simply have to use one of those uh, in your program and away you go. So if I want to add another one, for example, let's say I want to do the return key. So K underscore return. All I would have to do is go elif. I'm going to just copy that because I'm lazy. K underscore uh, return. And I want to print return was pressed. So I run this code, what should happen is when I hit an A key, prints out B, return, any other key does that, escape will quit the program. So this event loop is something you'll get very used to with Pygame. Also, um, this kind of structure, although I'm only printing something on the screen at the moment, is actually the exact same structure you'd use if you want to control something using keys such as a sprite or um, anything else on the screen. Okay, so this is actually a very common uh, code structure which you'll be using in your Pygame programs.